Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure. This is my very first TED talk and I'm very excited about this. And basically I wanted to start with asking you a question. If you've already seen the witness statement by David Attenborough, I'm asking because I watched it right after it's been released a couple of weeks ago and I was shocked and inspired at the same time. I was shocked because uh, I, it, we had so much negative impact on our planet over the last 90 years. And over that period, the winterless reduced by nearly half. Carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere doubled as a result of burning fossil fuels. And our population increased almost four times. The last number is especially important as the needs of our population significantly increase. And basically, we increase the amount of energy that we need, the amount of electricity that we consume. And it wouldn't be an issue uh, if our energy was produced from green and sustainable sources. But as we've heard today, this is not always true, right? Still about 80% of our total energy supply comes from fossil fuels. And this results in quite a lot of CO2 being released to atmosphere every year. And this is evident that our contribution to increasing carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere and concentration in the atmosphere is actually evident. And it will only get worse if we won't act, if we won't act now. Well, you already heard that the increase in the temperature it already reached about one degree Celsius since the pre-industrial era. And this makes uh, the current year and the previous year one of the warmest ever recorded. And we now observe melting ice caps, increasing sea levels, increased likelihood of droughts, wildfires, drastic uh, weather events, just to name a few. And as you've already seen, islands will be the first locations that will be primarily affected by climate emergency. So for example, uh, Carteret Islands were one of the first uh, locations in the world where populations had to relocate because of increasing sea levels. The same potentially uh, will affect uh, Crete and it will affect life and business on Crete. About 40% of Greek beaches already suffer from erosion and that affects tourism and sustainability of the local communities. What surprises me the most actually is the fact that Crete, with a beautiful island with a great potential for deployment of renewable energy, still relies on fossil fuels to produce majority of its electricity. If we take no action, a large fraction of Crete beaches can retreat by even 50 60% over the next 50 years. I believe, however, that islands like Crete can lead green energy transition and become fully decarbonized over the next 10, 15 years, giving an inspiring example to the rest of the world. And today I'm going to tell you how they can do it. So let me start with talking about the uh, demand uh, for energy in Crete. It, because of the seasonality, it, it, it uh, fluctuates between 160 megawatts during uh, winter and 620 megawatts during summer. Just remember this number. Unfortunately, about 77% of that electricity is still produced from combustion of heavy oil, uh, diesel or gas. And these thermal generators are ready to meet the need of, of local communities, their visitors uh, 24 seven, but they keep pumping CO2 into the atmosphere. The good news is, however, that the share of renewables has been increasing on, on Crete and overall in, on islands uh, over the past decade. Regardless of the variability, uh, we know this is the problem with renewables uh, and they cause some issues with uh, stability of the energy system. Regardless of that, renewables deliver about 23% of annual electricity demand. And this is a significant share compared to other countries around the world. But we need more. We need to build more renewables to fight climate emergency. So how can we make, what can we do to uh, make Crete the center for green energy transition? Let me give you a couple of examples of existing technologies and new technologies. So Crete, as many islands across, across the world, have been blessed with a significant wind resources. So the average wind uh, velocity can reach up to 10 meters per second especially in south and east regions of the island. To give you some perspective, at such high wind velocities, 
If we deploy a single commercial wind turbine with the blade length of up to 100 meters, we can generate 8 megawatts of energy. That is enough to power approximately 7,000 households over a year. What's important, such wind turbines can be, can be, can be located far away from the shore. Uh, and I believe that solution can be easily scaled and wouldn't affect the landscape, wouldn't affect the touristic landmarks and wouldn't have much environmental impact. As a proof of this, uh, we can have a look at the uh, example of 1200 megawatt Hornsea one uh, wind farm in the UK. That's going to be one of the largest wind farm in the world. Although such, uh, such wind turbines can significantly contribute towards the carbonization of Crete or islands, uh, they cannot achieve it alone. They need to have a support from efficient and sustainable energy storage technologies. And the technology, that, the technology for energy storage has been there already for years. And I believe you, you've heard about pump hydro energy storage. It uses uh, energy from renewables, the excess energy from renewables, to pump water from lower to higher reservoirs, accumulating potential energy. And we can recover up to 80-85% of that energy for production of electricity on demand, uh, displacing, uh, displacing re uh, burning fossil fuels, displacing fossil fuels. Yet because of the characteristic of some islands, of, in particular Crete, uh, relatively high cost of pumped hydro and the associated environmental impact, it might not be the best or the most sustainable way to go ahead. That's why researchers across the world actively seek an answer to question how we can efficiently store electricity, which by its nature is very difficult to store. Some of the best examples uh, include developments in smart grids, uh, smart grid area where localized grids can use electric vehicles, for example, as means to store renewable energy. These are increasingly considered as a viable means to balance the variable su uh, su supply of renewables, variability of renewables. There are some innovative and potentially breakthrough options for energy storage as well that gained industrial interest recently. And one of those include using air or compressing air to store renewable energy. It seems like an ideal solution, isn't it? Because we can use excess energy from wind to compress free air that can be easily stored at pressure. The only downside, with the existing technology, we can only uh, recover about 50% of the renewable energy input. But I think this is still better than wasting that energy by reducing the output of wind uh, systems when there is no demand for electricity. I think therefore uh, that a combination of wind in general, renewable potential with advancements in renewable wind energy storage can be a sustainable way for Crete and all the islands to become, uh, to enable a transition to green energy and to become net zero within the next 10, 15 years. The question is, whether we can scale such systems fast enough to prevent climate emergency. And I think we definitely can, but we need commitment, we need willingness to, uh, to actually achieve this. Renewables, variable renewables, are just one part to the equation that can actually solve uh, climate emergency. You may wonder what to do with the existing thermal power generators. Would this just shut down, become relics of, uh, of the past? Or will the system play a role in the green energy transition of islands? In my view, the existing assets can play a role if we use them in a proper way. I believe that you're aware that Crete is uh, the leading region for producing olives, olive oil, many other fruits, vegetables in Greece. So as a result, uh, the, this local economy will produce uh, quite a lot of waste biomass. Some of it is probably utilized, but when I was doing some reading about this subject, I found out that about 600,000 tons of olive tree pruning and 160,000 tons of, of olive kernel wood is produced uh, on, on increase per annum. And this biomass can potentially be used to replace fossil fuels in thermal generators. 
so I did. So my research actually looked at whether we can replace uh, fossil fuels completely with the biomass. And this waste biomass available on Crete is more than enough to satisfy the, the electricity demand of the island. So if you combine renewables and biomass available, you can easily decarbonize the entire energy system. So I reckon, why don't we use waste biomass now in the existing thermal generators to produce electricity and heat and cooling for, to meet the requirements of the local community? Another decarbonization route that is widely considered around the world relies on using renewables to produce hydrogen that can be either green hydrogen or turquoise hydrogen. These have a potential to not only decarbonize our electricity production, but also we can use it in households, commercial buildings, we can use it in as a fuel in our cars, and hydrogen has many more useful applications. The breakthrough technologies like pyrolysis integrated with carbon capture that we develop at Crownfield can uh, produce high purity hydrogen and char uh, just by heating the waste biomass or in principle any other waste. But this, are, this is the example of, rather, uh, of a technology at rather low technology readiness level and it needs much more research and development activities before it can be available to, uh, to help us become the more sustainable society. So how do we decarbonize islands? In my view, we need strong collaborations between universities, entrepreneurs, local governments, industries, and local communities. These are of paramount importance to implement green technologies and support transition to net zero. The relatively small and independent system of islands like Crete place them in the, in the best place for testing and developing such novel technologies. And you may ask me why? Well, even if those collaborations focus on proving uh, of what we call demonstration projects, these projects will have a significant impact on the carbonization of, that, uh, of, of the energy network, of the energy grid of that island. Say we can add 50, 100 megawatts of green, and green energy to a network of 600, 800 megawatts. That's significant percentage. And what's important, such projects can be easily funded by a European mecha mechanism, as we have already heard. Just imagine that the very first demonstration plant for carbon capture in the world, it has, uh, it has a capacity of 150 megawatts. So Crete would just need seven such demonstration projects to be fully decarbonized. Therefore, there are several actions that we need to take now to make decarbonization happen. We need to raise awareness uh, of available options among industry. We need to get support from local governments to deploy, to deploy those options. And we need to encourage young and motivated researchers and entrepreneurs to get involved in the first place, think outside the box and drive green energy, energy transition. And above all, all we need a willingness to implement this change. The technology is there, we just need to reach for it, and that's super inspiring for me. And here's the bottom line. We won't let the island sink if we act, uh, if we act now. The transition to green energy supply in Crete and other islands is more than possible. We just need to use off-the-shelf technologies, uh, leveraging the renewable potential of the islands. The breakthrough technologies such as green or Turkish hydrogen are not quite there yet, but I think with increased research and development efforts, we can get them ready in about five to 15 years. And the energy systems of islands are great locations to demonstrate such innovative technologies as this will already cut emissions from the very beginning of their operation. In either case, we cannot wait anymore. We need to form strong partnerships that will enable industries, researchers, entrepreneurs to drive green energy, energy transition in islands and across the world. Thank you.